home to the Four Winds Light Light Lager, a crisp, clean, and easy drinking beer, a beer for everyone, a perfect beer for before, after, or during the game. Ask for Four Winds Light Lager at your local liquor store or have some delivered right to your door through the online shop at fourwindsbrewing.ca. You're going to want some Four Winds while you are watching the World Juniors, and that's what we're about to talk about as we bring in our pal, our good friend over at Canucks Army, Dave Hall, our prospect guru. Dave, thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me, guys. How you doing? Good, good. It's good to chat with you. Uh, I have a lot of questions, um, so I'm just going to throw them all at you. Who's the favorite okay. in this tournament? Like, I, I know nothing about the prospects this year. Who's the favorite in the tournament? Well, yesterday we had a Sweden versus USA battle, and I have to admit that's probably going. That those are probably the two uh, that are favorites to win. After watching it, the first forty minutes, or at least the first twenty minutes, actually was all Sweden. I was pretty quick to just be like, you know what? I think they might win gold. This might be the year. Uh, after you know, disappointing bronze loss last year, but the last twenty minutes, the states looked unreal. I, I one thing I will say, and this is just a hint to all the competitors at the World Juniors. Do not take penalties against the states. It's both units are just cheat codes. So I think the states are going to be pretty good, but I think Sweden's a, a close second. Dave, what should Canucks fans expect from their prospects playing for Sweden at these World Juniors in terms of uh, where they slot into the lineup, potential role, uh, as well as how much of an impact you're expecting them to make? Yeah, I guess we're all kind of honorable Swedes at this point, eh? Like I, I heard you guys mention that it's going to be tough to watch Team Canada. It's you know I I totally get that, but uh, I mean right off the bat, it's going to be Lakaramaki. I don't think that's going to be a, a surprise to anyone. Um, he was a little bit quiet in the Tuesday game. Um, I was a little surprised actually, but yesterday's game, he was buzzing the entire game. Him and uh, his former teammate Noah Uslan were just so dynamic together, and they only combined for one goal, but it, it could have honestly been five ten to be honest like they were just they were buzzing all all game and i think you know there's there's obviously a lot of pressure for lakari mackey to perform in this one you know he's a 19 year old he's been doing some great stuff in the shl so as much as we don't want to say don't take all the stock into a world junior tournament i do think this is an important tournament for him to kind of showcase what he's been working on at the shl level um you know whether it was myself or chris Faber before me we've been harping on his game that it's kind of night and day from last year and so it really has, and I'm kind of excited to, for him to hopefully grab the reins and kind of just showcase what he's been doing. Um, so he's going to be, you know, the number one guy. He has potential to be one of the top producers in this tournament. It's going to be top, uh, top uh, even strength, top unit power play in his usual spot there. So definitely he's the guy. Um, second of all, obviously, you know, Tom Willander. Um, I'm a <laughs> it's going to be interesting with Tom Willander because I think it's going to be – you know, I think there's, again, just like Lakara Mackey, I think there's going to be a lot of expectations as our, our first round pick, you know, Benson or Rolander, there's all these debates going on all the time. And I think there's going to be, I'm going to call it unrealistic expectation. I just, you know, I I think some people, especially with defensemen, you know, if he's not getting the points, it's it's the end of the world. But, you know, from everything that we've seen in the two games that they've had, I, I don't expect him to be on the power play. He didn't see a sniff in the two games. And that's one game where Axel Sandin Palika, who's their go-to guy, he wasn't in the lineup and he still didn't get on the power play. So I don't think we're going to expect a ton of point production. There should be some five on five there. But in reality, I think a good tournament for him is just him showcasing what type of skater he is, showing off just how good of gap control he really does. And just overall, just the toolkit that he has, rather than just putting up points, I'm just, um, I just have this, this, this fear that there's going to be this huge expectation for him to put points on the board. And I just don't think that's what he should be expected to do. He's an 18 year old. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, hopefully he puts up a little couple points, but I think he's just going to have, uh, just a solid tournament to be honest. And then I think out of all three, I think, although he's going to be the yes, less utilized prospect, I think Elias Patterson has potent the highest potential to actually surprise quite a few people. Only because he comes in, he's going to be playing shutdown minutes on the third pairing and penalty kill. And I just don't think a lot of people will have expectations for what he's going to do. But so far in his two games, he's actually looked really solid and just a really good two-way defenseman that doesn't really flash, but he's just a no-nonsense guy that just gets the job done. Um, so I think he's actually going to surprise a couple of people with what he can do. 
Okay, so tempering expectations for Rolander, but pretty high expectations for Jonathan LeCaramacchi. And that's the guy I wanted to ask you about because you mentioned last year. Last year, we saw him as the 13th forward at times. Like, he, he had a tough tournament last year. So yeah. what are those things that he's worked on? Like, what's going to make this year so much different than last year? Well, I think number one is it's just health, right? He's he's feeling good. He's he's healthy. He's he's got his energy back, and he's ready to just produce. And you know, he's also now now he comes in with some good experience. He's got uh, a full half year of SHL experience where he's you know not dominated, but he's looked really good. Ten goals and sixteen points is nothing to scoff at for a nineteen year old. So he's got that. He's coming in with confidence and. The, the, the thing that I love about Sweden, as opposed to all the other teams, maybe USA because they have the development program, but they these guys, these kids have just played together so much. And especially this group of forwards, they're, a lot of them are 19 and they just have so much chemistry together that I just think LeCarrie Mackey along with Noah Osland and Liam Ogren, I just think that they're just going to come in and they're, they just have something to prove this year. And I just, I just think there's going to be a chip on his shoulder and he's just, he's just come a long way. And I think health has a lot to do with it. So. Not specifically pertaining to the world juniors, but with Canucks prospects as a whole, just big picture. Is there a prospect in your mind that Canucks fans aren't maybe talking enough about that maybe deserves a little bit more praise that's flying under the radar a little bit based off based on their development this season. Yeah. Sawyer Minio. Um, he's doing some really fun things in Seattle. And, you know, I, I will say that a lot of his production um, is, has been on the power play. Like let's not sugarcoat it. He has, you know, half of his points on the power play on the top unit there, but he's just outside of top 10 in defensive points. And he just like, to be honest, for a third, like, I mean, obviously he's not giving you as much value in the third round as Hunter Brustevich maybe, but he's coming in as a third round pick and he's actually looking pretty good. He's a really smooth skater. He's a, he's an all around defenseman that can play in all situations. And I just think they may have found something that actually is, is pretty interesting in the third round there. Dave, um, First of all, I want to plug your work because you've been doing the kind of preliminary stuff at Canucks Army, the preliminary games, which is great. Uh, and you're going to have the coverage for us all tournament long. So people listening to this and watching this on YouTube, make sure you go check out Canucks Army and you check out Dave Hall's author profile because he's going to have a lot. We actually have, uh, I, I put in the chat for listener questions, Dave. So we have a few questions from listeners to oh, you okay. um right so i'm gonna get to this one from andrew christensen which also i'm interested in this who are the top two goalie prospects going into this tournament the top two goalie prospects i would have to say sweden's uh Havlid, for sure he's probably he's probably going to be the, the goalies are so interesting in the world juniors you know i was actually just looking this up yet today with team canada because i'm actually i'm in a world junior pool and we're just kind of going through everything and goalies are just that one situation and Specifically for Canada, I guess it just always seems to be this like who's going to be the goalie. And uh, to be honest, the tournament starts in a couple of days, and we still don't know who the, the number one goalie is going to be. But I think at this point, Team Sweden's goalie is probably going to be um, you know the number one guy to to look at. Um, I think Finland, Finland's uh, I, I'm blanking on his first name, but Coco, I believe he he he's going to get the bulk of the starts for Team Finland. Looks like you might know what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry. I thought uh, Nicholas, um, Nicholas Coco. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Coco. you. Thank you. Um, Coco. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he's he's going to play all the games for Finland as well. So he's he's probably going to have a good workload. Um, and then Trey Augustine, he's looked really good for for Team USA. So I think those are probably those are the three to kind of basically the only ones solidified at this point to look to look at. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting that you brought up Kako because he was one of the guys, you know, every year for the draft, I kind of throw out which goalie prospects I think the Canucks will like. Um, and again, I always pride myself on not actually having any info from Ian Clark, but I just throw <laughs> out that I'm like, I think he likes these guys. And I, I've been right twice already. So um, I threw out Kako last year, but he went in the second round. I think I think the Kraken or maybe the Flyers. I, I can't remember who it was. I, th yeah, I think it was, it was the Kraken. Kraken. 
Kraken? Yeah, okay, there you go. I think it was like late second round. I'm not sure. I thought he might be there for the Canucks in the third, fourth round, but he was not. Uh, they took him in the second round. So I find that interesting that uh, you bring him up. And I'm, I'm actually, I don't know, I'm excited to see a prospect's development like that, like a goaltender especially. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I forgot about that name. I honestly didn't even know he was going to be at this tournament. I haven't done much yeah, yet. It's just so tough with goalies because you just never know. Like we've had, like I said, Team Canada, this happens every single year where you just, you think it's going to be someone and then someone just comes out of the woodwork and just has this bang out tournament. And I don't know, it just, goalies are so hard to predict in this one. Yeah, Thomas Millish last year obviously was the big win from go. Coquitlam. Got to give him, got to give him the shout out he deserves. He, um, he's got the World Championships. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, okay, we'll get to this last one for you, Dave, from another uh, another viewer, and then we'll let you go. Uh, sure. Any under the radar draft eligible players to look out for? I'm gonna hold off on that a little bit, only because it's a little bit early. Like back, um, I, I used to. Uh, uh, right for Dauber and I used to be all in the you know the under the rate these kind of these kind of guys but just because I've been so focused on the Canucks prospects and just getting everything going I, I don't want to say out a name that I haven't been too familiar with I, I start to look at some of those under the radar guys pretty much now as we kind of get closer to the draft so I, I wouldn't want to throw out a name and just act like I know what I'm talking about I almost feel like the world juniors is a chance to find those under the radar guys. Like it's literally it's like, crazy. yeah, okay. This guy was playing on a third line or he was playing with a guy who we thought was going to be really good. And like, let's be honest. Like that's how, that's how amateur scouts in the NHL sometimes find guys. They're like, well, he played with our first round pick and we really liked what he did with him. So we'll take him in the sixth, seventh round. I, I wonder if there's going to be a guy uh, that emerges like that. Cause basically there is every year basically for you, right? Yeah, exactly. And you bring up a good point. I, I, I thank you for doing that. And that's pretty much what it is. Like at the world juniors is kind of that moment where you take a look at the whole broad scope of things and you just, you take a look. And then from there you're, you make notes. Okay. That's who I got to go in and watch. And then you kind of just go from there, but we just got to find that next Arvid Cosmo. Right. And uh, see how it goes. The next only you levy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And, awesome. and that, that's a great point and, and you brought it up already before i came in like it, it's one of those tournaments where there's just so many expectations but it's so important not to take like to just take it with a grain of salt right like it so many things can happen like i i always like bring ovid cosmer up because i remember that world juniors he was just like he came out he was a workhorse he was a water bug and everyone was just like oh my god including myself you know a seventh round gem and you know look how he turned out so I love it. I love the Arvid Kosmar poll because Kosmar mania was a real thing. Like that was a oh, real was. thing. People were like, we got another Christmas present. Absolutely. The next uh, awesome. Niels Hoglander. That's right. There you go. Dave, thanks so much. And we'll be reading along as I'm sure all of our listeners will as well with all of your work uh, at Canucks Army. Thanks so much for doing this, my friend. And happy holidays to you and yours. Yeah. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, guys. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Dave. Canucks conversation with Harmon and Quads every weekday at 2 p.m. Be sure to check it out on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. And if you missed it, go check it out on your favorite podcast catcher app.